How many times has the Lord brought him back? Six. Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. This is going to be my Game of Thrones Season 6 foreshadowing video. Just all my favorite times that the show foreshadowed some big WTF event that hadn't happened yet. Just careful for spoilers for everything that's happened on the show so far. And there is a new round of the giveaway this week. We're still doing the DVD giveaway, which is actually dropping in the next week and a half, so we might see the first trailer then. But all you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave a comment on this video. So here we go, starting with the pilot. Of course it's the pilot, they're gonna foreshadow a ton of stuff. Not just for that first season, but for the rest of the show. The idea is, is that for the best TV shows, the, the shows where the showrunners, the people behind the show, have a very clear idea for how the show begins and ends, they build a lot of extra things that will set up later seasons in the pilot. So first big moment of foreshadowing, the White Walkers are coming and the dead are coming with them. Most of the drama in the first couple of seasons, particularly season one, is between great houses, a Game of Thrones, the literal Game of Thrones that different people are playing on the show. The supernatural war gets teased out much slower. Next big moment of foreshadowing, this is more of a visual metaphor. The direwolf killed by the stag foreshadowing Ned Stark's death at the end of the season. Ned Stark killed by a stag, Joffrey Baratheon. Not too long after that, Jaime kind of foreshadows losing his hand when he talks to Tyrion about Bran Stark falling out the window. He'll be a cripple. It's grotesque. Give me a good, clean death anytime. And yeah, I'm sure Jaime did wish for death a couple times when he was recovering from his hand wound, but he's largely a stronger character because of it now. This next one is a little more literal. Melisandre burning the leeches for Stannis. She speaks the names Rob Stark, Joffrey Baratheon, and Balan Greyjoy. Of those people, the only one who is still alive on the show, for the time being, is Balan Greyjoy. If you've read the books, you kind of know where this is headed. Please use spoiler tags if you want to talk about it in the comments. But Balan Greyjoy is still alive on the show as of season 6. Next big one, Theon, kind of a douchebag early in the series. Very tragic character now. Maybe he'll find redemption. But during season 2, when he assaults Winterfell, when he tries to take it, he says to Maester Lewin, saying that he doesn't want to be thought of as a fool and a eunuch amongst his people. What is he now? He has literally lost his manhood, thanks to Ramsay Bolton. During season 4, Littlefinger predicts Tywin's death when he says, People die at their dinner tables, people die in their beds, they die squatting over their chamber pots. Next one, also a really awesome little finger moment, when he's talking to Sansa in the crypts of Winterfell, she's standing at the statue of her Aunt Lyanna remembering her, and Littlefinger tells her the story of the tourney at Harrenhal when Rhaegar crowned Lyanna over his wife, Elia Martell, with the blue roses. Sansa replies with, yeah, but Rhaegar kidnapped and raped my aunt, and Littlefinger just tweaks his head a little bit and says, did he? As if he's asking a question. Now each character on the show probably has their own idea about what happened between Rhaegar Targaryen and Lyanna Stark, but this is the show just foreshadowing that maybe Rhaegar and Lyanna had a relationship together. Maybe they had a secret baby together. So this is one in a couple different moments that foreshadow R plus L equals J. Later in the pilot, they also foreshadowed Daenerys unburnt when she gets into the really hot bath and doesn't seem to feel it. Like it's supposed to be scalding hot, but she steps out and seemingly has no burns. Targaryens have a mythical resistance to fire that doesn't actually exist. Technically, when she actually survives being burnt by fire, like in the funeral pyre for Khal Drogo when the dragons are hatched, blood magic is in play, so it's a bit of a special case. Targaryens can totally burn in fire, as evidenced by one Targaryen king who thought he was an actual dragon and tried to drink wildfire. There was also the tragedy at Summerhall that killed Egg from the Duncan Egg series. So Targaryens can totally burn unless magic is in play. If they did want to prove that Daenerys was fireproof though, they could totally have her stand right in front of Drogon and have him just open up. That would be so hilarious. Just take a bath in fire like it's no big deal. This next one's a fun one too. Weddings on Game of Thrones are always a terrible idea. Do not get married on Game of Thrones. During season two, Varys and Tyrion are talking about how much they hate the ringing of the bells in the city because they always ring for something really terrible happening like a king dying, some horror, or a city being under siege, and then Tyrion adds, or a wedding. So wedding bells also equal disaster bells. Stay away. When Oberyn Martell was agreeing to be Tyrion's champion, he foreshadows Tyrion winding up in the fighting pits. T Tyrion's like, maybe you shouldn't drink before you go into the fighting pits tomorrow. And Oberyn responds with, you learned this during your years in the fighting pits? Well, during season five, Tyrion and Ser Jorah get sent to the fighting pits. That's how they wind up back in front of Daenerys. And at the end of season four, the three-eyed raven foreshadows Bran's power over nature when he says, 
you'll never walk again, but you will fly. Now he's not just talking about him skin changing into animals, he's talking about a grander power over nature that will allow him to see across time and space. So he will be flying over Planetos in more ways than one. And probably one of my other big favorites is the resurrection of Jon Snow with Beric Dondarrion. How many times has the Lord of Light brought him back? And Melisandre flips her shit. She has no idea that that's possible. So even though she walks around with that smug look on her face, there's still a lot that she doesn't know about her own magic. So let me know in the comments, what is your favorite moment of foreshadowing on Game of Thrones? Either for a specific moment or something that's going to happen way later in the series. Sometimes they're really subtle, like with the stag and the dire wolf. Sometimes they're a little more literal, like with Melisandre's leeches. I definitely think my favorite is either a tie between Lyanna Stark and the Crips or Beric Dondarrion being brought back six times. So I've also got a new Star Wars video that I'm working on, so I'll probably post that first tomorrow, but I might also try to get a Game of Thrones Q&A out before Walking Dead. If I don't, then I'll just post it on Monday, so no worries. While you guys wait for that to post, you can click here for the Game of Thrones Season 6 behind the scenes video, and you can click here to learn a little bit more about resurrection on Game of Thrones in A Song of Ice and Fire. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Let's high five. I'll see you guys tonight.